Greetings and salutations guys, welcome back to WASD. Um, I'm here with Thomas to talk about, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Ionos? Isonos. Isonzo. Isonzo, yeah. there we go. I can never get it pronounced right. Uh, Isonzo, I wasn't aware of this until I just met you there. This is the third game in the series. Yes. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the series first? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so they, uh, this is World War One game series. It's also known as... Um, we, our previous games were called Verdun and Tannenberg. And they take place on, respectively, the uh, Western Front of the Great War and the Eastern Front. So the first one is uh, France, Belgium, the classic French warfare that we all know, um, and the Eastern Front is more a bit more obscure already. But it's in Russia, uh, Ukraine, um, a, a different dynamic, and I think a bit less known as well. And so he's also uh, is a third uh, game, and so it's also the third front we are doing. And so with this one, yeah. it's the third front. So which front is it this time? Uh, this is the Italian front. So it's a, a more a bit more condensed. I think the other fronts were larger. Uh, but a lot happened here, and it was very impactful for the whole war. So. so, does that change the combat mechanics or the gameplay mechanics? Because you're using Italian rather than Russian, I'm sure it's different yeah. tactics. Different. Yeah, exactly. So, for each game, we have a unique uh, primary game mode that uh, reflects the type of fighting that was done there. And with these also, um, the characteristic thing was uh, that they. The, they had a lot of major offensives. Uh, the Italians famously tried to basically capture the same line 11 times, the 11 battles of the Um So th this is what we wanted to reflect. So we have an attacker and a defender uh, role, and you move through maps sector by sector, and also through multiple maps that are chained together. This to, yeah, to represent that sort of struggle to gain a real, uh, to make a real move. So, you it's going along like the real Italian tactics and real battles that happen. So how historically accurate is the game? Uh, yeah, we, we root everything in uh, authenticity. It's one of the yeah, it's one of the hallmarks of our series, I think. So all the weapons are correct. All the uniforms are you know from the from the little color tabs to the colors and the materials are as as correct as possible. And our maps are also based on on satellite data actually. So we. To start with satellite data, and we then scale it, and well, you know, merge it a bit, yes. <laughs> yeah. it a bit together. But yeah, everything's based on actual areas that way. Oh, that's quite impressive. How, how much quite a lot of work to scale yeah. that down into what we've just played there. It is because for some battles we really there were no interesting sort of sh shapes, so we had to sometimes we have to you know push it a, a, a mile this way or a mile that way. But we really try to keep it in the area where yeah where it was fun. And for fans of the series, how much is this similar to the previous ones? Because you mentioned it's changing with Italian yeah. and different warfare. So like, how similar is it? Uh, I think it will be very recognizable to fans, but it's also <laughs> important to know that we did change very core systems. Uh, for them to share a lot of the, you know, uh, a lot of the, well, the code uh, to, in a developer speak. Uh, and for this game, we did try to redo a lot of the core systems. So the gunplay, all the first-person animations are all made anew from the ground up. Now, how much has been the third game? I'm sure there's quite a big community around the series. Yeah, there is. How much community involvement has there been in the development? Um, quite a lot. We actually have been doing internal testing for uh, almost a year, I think, or maybe even longer. As we have done regular closed uh, alpha and beta tests uh, with a uh, yeah, very, uh, very nice little community. And we also have some localization help and even some historical help. So we have a little historical panel from our community that we sometimes ask very specific questions to. <laughs> and I, like I say, I've never heard this series before until today. I've just got hands on with it there. Yep. Um, I found it incredibly accessible for someone who's not an FPS game mm -hmm. and not a primarily a PC game. Right. That was very easy to, to get into and play and feel like I was actually contributing to, to my team. Yeah. And how important was that to make it partly for the community but also accessible to new players? Um, yeah, well, of course, pretty important. You always want to reach new people outside of your community. I think we do have a pretty streamlined uh, flavor of FPS, so we, we try not to get bogged down and you have to communicate. Um, there's all sub genre now where it's very much about real strategy. You have a commander, you have this and that. Um, while we think that's very interesting, also from an authentic standpoint, we did chose, uh, choose in the end to make it more streamlined again. 
and make your yeah it makes you have more individual impact as well so I can imagine if you just pick up a gun and run around you will feel that you can actually contribute very easily. Yeah. I mean one thing I found interesting because it's one shot one kill yeah um, is that a feature of the full series yeah totally yeah it is um, it is yeah, an interesting choice, I think, as in uh, there are a lot of reasons why we wouldn't do it, but it is very core to how World War One must have felt. Um, it was very lethal. You had very almost no protection against that or the weather or, you know, disease. Um, so much was going on there. It was pretty horrible, and I think we do want to capture that with the lethality of the combat. But it certainly does, I, and your next step could be your last one kind of yeah. feeling to it. Yeah, um, definitely. But at the same time, it makes you feel that I'm just scared of a mountainside and took out four people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like <laughs> I felt pretty, pretty badass at that point as yeah. well. Um, what I've just played there, it's got a hand on there. That seems very polished and very finished. Yep. How close are you to release it? Uh, um, I think I think the game is in great shape right now. We are still aiming for a Q2 release as of this quarter. Um, yeah, the internal testing is going very well, so uh, it's, it's definitely the last. Q2 is not that's very very close to the finish that's line then. Correct. Yeah. And is that PC only or the console as well? Uh, PC and uh, all the last gen and current gen uh, consoles, uh, the Xboxes and PlayStation. That's brilliant. Um, I. I'm not, it's not my kind of genre, yeah. but I had a thoroughly good time with that. I yeah, really enjoyed please. that. Um, I'm going to follow the scene more. Thank, thank you very much, yeah, guys. Yeah, thank you. Nice to you.